Okay, so uh, today we're looking at section 5.9. You are writing polynomial functions and models. The standard that we're going to be following today is adapting the general symbolic form of a function to one that fits the specifications of a given situation by using the information. Uh, yeah, that's, all, that's pretty hard to understand, but basically we're going to be using information to put it into a model of a polynomial, uh, typically using a story problem or a graph. So in this first example, this will not take that long to get through this. The, we're going to write a cubic function whose graph is shown. So if you look at your paper, you're given several pieces of information, especially we're given three x-intercepts. So right away, when you write a function, you should know that you have three factors x plus 4, x minus 1, and x minus 3. Because those are our zeros. x equals negative 4, x equals 1, and x equals 3. They are labeled right on your graph. The only thing is, is we need to make sure that there's an a out front. Because we don't know if there's supposed to be some type of number out front. That's what we're going to have to solve for. So we know what our zeros are, but we don't know what the exact function is because there could be a number out front because if this is a 5 or a 10 or a negative 2, it doesn't really matter because our zeros still end up being the same because that cannot affect what our zeros are. So what we do then is from here, we take the last point that's given to us, typically a y-intercept, and we just plug in the values and solve for our a. So we know that our y is negative 6, so we say negative 6 equals a, and then we just put in our 0, because that's what it is, 0 comma negative 6. 0 plus 4, 0 minus 1, and 0 minus 3. So we have negative 6 equals a times 4 times negative 1 times negative 3. So we actually have negative 6 equals 12a, we divide both sides by 12, and we get a equals negative 1 half. So then we just rewrite our function. a is now equal to negative 1 half, so we have negative 1 half times the quantities x plus 4, x minus 1, and x minus 3. And that's our equation. That's it. So that's all you have to do for those ones, is once you're given a graph, and you know what your x-intercepts are, you're just going to write your factors out, and then to figure out what your a is out front, you take one other point, plug it in, and solve for your a. So hopefully that's pretty easy. Okay, so the next thing is going to be a graphing calculator activity. So what I want you to do is just kind of write down the steps of what we do here. Again, with you, without you having a graphing calculator, I kind of understand that this can be difficult to remember. So just write down the steps of what we're doing here, because this can be a little bit complicated. Um, it is something that you've probably never done before on the graphing calculator, so I want to make sure that you uh, can follow this. But what we're doing is we're doing cubic regression. So let's read through this problem. It says the table shows the typical speed y in feet per second of a space shuttle x seconds after launch. Find a polynomial model for the data. Use the model to predict the time when the shuttle speed reaches 4,400 feet per second, at which point its boost, booster rockets detach. So basically what we're going to do is they're giving us all of our data. What they want us to do is use our graphing calculator to figure out what would the actual function of this be. Because this is not perfect data. It's more of like a scatter. And, that's, and it kind of goes through below what we're, exactly we're, what we're going to do. But I'm going to show you on the graphing calculator what you would want to do. So the first thing is, is when we open up the graphing calculator, the first thing you want to make sure is... If we go to second and then stat plot, because that's what we're doing is we're plotting data, so we need to go there. So the first thing you, you would do is you go to stat plot. You want to make sure that your plot one is on because we're only going to do one set of data. Now, the other way to do this is if we go to our y equals, you will notice above you have these plot one, plot two, and plot three. If those are highlighted, then that means that it's on. So you notice that plot one is already on, so it's highlighted. Okay, so that's our first step. The next step 
is to go to your list. You see we have list above stat here, okay? We actually don't, we're not gonna go to the list, but we're gonna click on the stat button. And we are going to go to edit, because what we wanna do is we wanna edit our list, or in other words, we wanna edit our table. So we're gonna click enter on edit, so you might want to write that down. And then as you see here, we have two columns. We have L1 and L2. And what I've done is I've already put in all of the data. So normally what you would do, so what you would do here is once you're in your stat and you're in your edit, you would just go through and add your data yourself. L1 will be your X values, L2 will be your Y values. So when we graph this, because the stat plot is on, you will already see our values here. So those are all the values that we had plotted. Now, I'm gonna go to the window, I changed the window. How did I know what to change the window to? Well, it was all based on what was in the table. So the first X value was 10, the last X value was 80. So I said the minimum is 100, and I said the maximum is, uh, sorry, minimum zero, maximum 100. And then the Y value, the lowest value was 202, and the highest value was 22. 83, so therefore I just did 0 to 2500. And you could mess with it yourself just to make sure that all of the data uh, shows up actually on your graphing calculator. So you can see that the graph has all, this, uh, has all the points plotted. Then our next step is to, we're going to go to our stat again, and we're going to go to calculate, and we're going to go down to cubic regression. Because we know we're doing a cubic regression, we're gonna to go to cubic regression, we're gonna hit enter, and then we're gonna hit enter again. And what's gonna happen is, is it's gonna give us all of the approximate values of what we put in front of, our, in front of our equation. So you can see on your notes, it already says under step two what your equation is. It says we have y equals 0 0.00650 x to the third plus Point, or sorry, minus 0.73936, and you can cut that off wherever, x squared plus 48.9562x plus et cetera, okay? So what we're gonna do now is our next step is to take our new equation. Now that we've put a in for a, b in for b, c in for c, d in for d, we're going to actually put that in as our equation. So we're gonna go to our y equals, and we're gonna leave the stat plot on, and we're gonna actually type this in. So this is going to be point zero zero six five x to the third minus point seven three nine x squared plus forty nine x minus 236, and we just approximated it. So what's gonna happen now is when we hit graph, it will leave the points on there, and now you can see that the line actually matches up pretty closely with the points, which is what we're doing. That's what the graphing calculator does, is it takes the data that we have, and it gives us what an approximate uh, function for that would be. Now the last step is, if you recall from the question, it wants to know, Use the model to predict the time when the shuttle speed reaches 4,400. Well, the Y value is our speed here. So what we wanna do then is we're gonna graph one more thing. We're gonna to go to Y equals, and we are going to go down to our Y2, and we are going to put in 4,400. And then we're gonna graph, and you should see a vertical line go across here. Okay, we need to make our window bigger. So right now our window's maximum is at 2,500. So be careful, anytime something doesn't show up like that, then we need to change our window. So we're gonna go to 4,500 now. And you will see that our points have kind of gone away, but the graph will continue to go. So again, we're still off the map a little bit, so we need to change our x value. So we're gonna increase our x value to say, and again, it doesn't matter, you can play with it, but I'm gonna to go to 500 because it doesn't really matter. We're gonna make it big enough so that way we can see it.
perfect. So now we can actually see where our graph is intersecting. So they want to know what is the actual answer. Well, here's where we're going to use the graphing calculator one more time. So write this down. It's not hard, but just make sure that you understand these steps. So if I wanted to find the intersection point of these two graphs, I go second, calc, and there's intersect. So you hit five. And what it wants you to do is it takes you on the first curve. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your cursor and we just want to get it as close just got to look for our cursor here okay so there's our cursor okay so what we do is we get it as close to the intersection point as possible, and I know you can't see it, but it is up here. So we're going to hit enter. And then the second curve, we're going to hit enter again. It's pretty close. And then the third one is a guess, just like everything else. And it actually gives you the intersection point. So it says your x value is 106.03. So therefore, the booster rocket detaches at about 106 seconds after the launch. And that's all we were looking for in this problem. So what we've done here is we've done a couple of things. We've shown you how to find a model, an equation off of a set of data. It gives you what the model is. Then I've also shown you how to find an intersection of two lines on your graph using the graphing calculator. So uh, the second half of today was all with your graphing calculator. So make sure that you've written down the steps of how to do the linear regression, or sorry, the cubic regression, and then also how to find the intersection and then bring that tomorrow so that way you can use it in class. Okay, that's it.